Hi, my name is Amanda and I'm from Math Counts and I'm going to walk you through how to set up your proof Proofigami and then use it to prove the Pythagorean theorem while my coworker Kara, who is the author of this year's club activity book, shows you how to do all of the folds. So the first step is to take the top left corner of your paper and fold it down so that it meets the bottom right corner. And you'll need to line up the corners really well before you press down on any folds. Um, and throughout this process, you'll need to make sure you're pressing down pretty hard. So after you've done that, you're going to open up your paper. And then step two is just folding it in half again. Um, but this time you're going to take the top edge and fold it down to meet the bottom edge. And again, you're going to want to line up your corners pretty well before you press down. Now at this point, you'll keep your paper folded, but you're going to take the right side of your paper and fold it over so it meets the left side. And then again, you'll need to get your corners lined up before pressing down. And please note, the more you fold your paper, the harder you'll need to press down for each subsequent fold. Um, so make sure you're pushing hard enough so that it looks good at the end. So you should have your main fold on the right and the loose edges of the paper on the left. And next, you'll basically repeat, be repeating step one, but for this smaller square. So you'll take the top left corner and fold it down so it meets the bottom right, line up those corners, and then push down. So now you should have created a right triangle. And what we're going to do next is take that top vertex and fold down probably about a third of the way down on that right side so that you create a smaller triangle at the top with two sides of equal length. And please note, your students will have different sizes for this smaller triangle at the top and that's completely fine. There's no right or wrong length for those sides of the triangle. And you're going to need to push down pretty hard on that fold. So now you're gonna open up your paper completely and what you should have at this point is a smaller square that's in the center of your square paper. And what we want now is to extend the fold for each of the edges of that smaller square so that all four edges extend across the entire paper from the left edge to the right. So you're going to fold down and then crease all the way across the paper and then you'll repeat that step for each of the edges of that center square. Now when you open up your paper, you should see that you have three horizontal folds and three vertical folds in addition to those two diagonal folds that go across the paper. And at this point, we're going to label two of the folds that will become legs of a right triangle. So for the first leg, you're going to take a marker or colored pencil and go to the rightmost vertical fold and draw a line segment that goes from the top of your paper down to the top horizontal fold. So it's a short line segment. And then to the right of the segment, you'll label it leg A. Then take a different color and draw a line segment along that top horizontal fold that goes from the left edge of your paper all the way across to meet leg A. Then underneath the line segment, you'll label it leg B. Next, you're going to take the top left corner and fold it back so you can create the hypotenuse or leg C of the right triangle that you're creating. And for this step, it's easier to turn your paper over. Um, so with your paper turned over, you're going to fold down so that you create a crease that connects A and B, the two line segments that you just drew. So once you have everything lined up, you'll push down. Then if you turn your paper back over, you can see that you've created a right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C. And you're not going to label C yet. Instead, you'll turn your paper over again and you're going to fold down three more triangles that are the same size as the triangle you just created. And you can see what Kara is doing here. Essentially, you're just connecting two folds together with each of these new folds. So just like you connected A and B, you're connecting a different vertical and horizontal fold. Um, but it's probably easier just to think of this step as creating a smaller square out of your paper by folding back four congruent triangles. Thank you. 
So as you finish up that last fold to create your fourth triangle, you'll see you've created a smaller square with side lengths equal to leg C. And if you have your paper turned back around, you also can see the right triangle you've created with sides A and B. Now you'll unfold your paper completely so you can label the hypotenuse. So now you'll take a third color and draw a line segment along that diagonal fold to connect legs A and B. And Kara is pretty good at drawing straight lines freehand, but you or your students may want to use a straight edge for labeling A, B, and C. And then you'll label this leg C underneath the segment. So at this point we're going to tear or cut, if you have scissors it might be a little easier, uh, but we're just going to tear along the length of leg A. So you'll start at the top of your paper and tear just to the top horizontal fold. So now you've actually completed setting up your proofagami and we're going to walk through how to use it to prove the Pythagorean theorem. So to do this, we're first going to need to draw two more line segments that are equal to the lengths of legs A and B. So first you'll take the color that you use to draw leg A and you're going to draw a line along the top horizontal fold that starts where leg B ends and goes all the way to the right edge of your paper. Then above that line segment, you'll write A. Next, for the second segment, you'll take the color you used to label the original leg B and draw a line segment along that leftmost vertical fold that goes from where leg B is at the top all the way down to the bottom edge of your paper. Then to the right of that line, you'll label it B. Now at this point, your students might be skeptical that the two segments you drew for A and the two that you drew for B are equal to each other in length. And if that's the case, then you can measure them. So you can see that the new leg A that we've drawn is two and a half inches, and the original leg A that we drew is also two and a half inches. And if you measure B, you'll see that the original leg B that we drew is just shy of five and a half inches. And if we measure the line segment that we did um, just now, um, you'll see Kara's hand is covering it, but we promise it's also just shy of five and a half inches. So now that we've measured these segments, we can see that we've created two squares one that has an area of B squared and one that has an area of A squared. And at this point, we're going to fold back four congruent triangles so that the only thing we see is A squared plus B squared. Now we're going to label them so it's easier for you to see. So the triangle at the top left will be one. The triangle we created with legs A, B, and C will be two. Then just below that will be three. And finally, that bottom left triangle will be four. So now you're going to fold back those four congruent triangles. And it's easier to fold back one and two together. Just, fold, just do one fold along leg B to get those out of there. Um, and then with three and four, you'll do the same thing again. Um, you'll fold back triangles three and four together along the other line segment B um, that you drew. So now the only thing that you should see is A squared plus B squared because we eliminated four congruent triangles from our paper. So now we've shown A squared plus B squared um, by eliminating four congruent triangles and we're going to do the same thing now um, for C squared. So to do this, we're actually going to need to open our paper. And at this point, you're going to label two more triangles that are congruent to triangles one, two, three, and four. Um, and Kara and I are going to label them so it's easier to see. So right now, triangle five will be at the top right corner of the paper. And triangle six is going to be at the bottom right corner of the paper. So now to create C squared, we're again going to fold back four triangles that are congruent, but this time it's going to be triangle one, triangle five, triangle six, and triangle four. So now if you rotate your paper, you can see that you've created a square with side lengths equal to, equal to C, meaning it has an area of C squared. And again, we did this by eliminating four congruent triangles. So now we have our proof of the Pythagorean theorem that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Ta-da!